Welcome back to my t-shirt printers. I'm Mike. Let's create something in Illustrator. Okay, so first of all, I just want to give a huge, big, big, big... Okay, we get it. It's big. Big. Shout out to Craig Dixon, Victor, and Ella Gonzalez. You guys are awesome. Thanks very much for your donations. Absolutely blew me away. You guys are awesome. Thanks very much. Really helps support the channel, especially in this point in time. Whew. So on to today, what we're going to be doing is that vector stamp effect. Wish I had something... What's cool about the vector stamp effect is that you can basically take a logo and being vector you can scale it to any size you want which is a great thing. And also the stamp effect really gives that little bit of an edge to it if you don't want that harsh uh, distressed look over your logo which we'll do in another episode. It just creates that little bit of an edge to your design so it's not just flat and straight. Some designs are great flat and straight but if you just want to take that little bit of an edge that's what we're going to be doing today with the stamp effect. Okay let's head over to Illustrator. Okay, so up here I have my design. Now the first thing you want to do when you've got your design is make sure that it's one graphic. And what I mean by one graphic, I mean if I select this bit over here, you can see that is not connected to that, it's not connected to that, it's not connected to that, it's not connected to that. We want this to connect. So what I'm going to do, I am just going to go Command A or I'm just going to drag my marquee with my pointer tool over the entire graphic area. Head on over to my Pathfinder, hold Alt and click on this Unite button over here and then I'm going to click on Expand. And now you can see it's one graphic. I'm just going to go to wireframe mode here quick and you can see everything is all nicely connected up. Now that we've got our graphic ready, let's select our entire graphic by going Command A or just simply dragging your marquee with your direction tool over your whole graphic area. Then we're going to head out up to Effect and drop down to Distort and Transform and then over to Roughen. Okay, I think that looks good. Job done. Coffee time. With our Roughen window popped up, we want to make sure your preview is turned on. I'm going to head on up to Size and where it says 5% at this point, I'm going to enter in here 0.1 and then I'm just going to hit Tab. I've got mine selected on Relative. It's probably the best option for this. Then on the detail side, we'll come back to that in a second. Over here where it says points, I'm gonna click on smooth. This just helps create where you've got these rounded edges and circles like this. It just creates more of that round edge keeping in with what your original image actually is. Now with the detail function, we either wanna go up or down. Now this is for you guys to decide. If I go all the way up, I end up with something that looks like a furry critter. So I am going to be scaling this back down to let's say about 10 and that's kind of where I'm wanting it. Just a tiny little bit of warp, that stampy effect. So I'm going to hit OK. Then I'm going to hit, head on up to Object and drop down to Expand Appearance. This is just so that we can get those lines, those, those vector lines going. So if I just hit Spacebar quick, you can see all those little nodes have now traced out exactly our graphic. The next important thing to do is to change the color of your graphic. So at this moment it's a solid black. We want this to be a mid gray or a 50% gray. So I'm going to select my graphic and head on over here to my swatches palette. Now you can see this color over here is a solid black. We want this to be 50%. So that's 60, there is 50. I'm going to select that one and you can see it's changed to this gray color. Once this is mid gray, then I'm going to head on up to effect and drop down to stylize and inner glow. Now with the window pop up, you can see your graphic. It's got the slight bevel look to it. The wider areas like this area over here has obviously got a big large gray area and the small areas like around the squeegee over here and these little shadow bits over here they are more dense so depending on what type of graphic you're working on you actually may want to split this up and do different effects on different areas but I'm pretty happy with the variation that this is going to give my graphic. So on the mode you want this set to normal opacity make sure that's on 100% on Blur, we'll come back to that in a second, and we want edge selected here. Now blur, if you if I put this down to one, you can see it really takes away that gradient in here. I would definitely want that up a bit. If you go too far, you see it's punched out this whole area here, and I will still want some of that gradient effect within there. So I'm gonna leave mine on two, and I'm gonna hit OK. Then I'm gonna head back on up to effect, and drop down to pixelate, and go this mesotint. Mesotint? Mes mesotint, how do, you, how do you actually say that? Mesotint, mesotint? The only thing to make sure with mesotint is that we've got grainy dot selected. So if you've got grainy dot selected, that's fine. You're just gonna hit okay. And this is what it does to our graphic. Now that reminds me of an old TV. Remember when you used to fall asleep and wake up? That's the one. From here, making sure that we got our graphics selected, just dragging the marquee over it again. I'm gonna head back on up to effect, drop down to sketch and go to stamp. 
Now this pop-up window pops up here. I'm just gonna select over here where it says 100%. I'm just gonna put fit in view so we can actually see the whole thing. So with this voicey, what we want to do is adjust it to how you want your stamp effect. So uh, if you've got your lightness and your darkness balance, my recommendation is leave this on one. Your smoothness, depending on how many of those little white dots you want on it, you can push it up and you can see it's going to take them away completely or you can push it all the way down and it gives you what I feel is too many. So you're gonna set that somewhere where you happy with it just for that cool stamp effect that's probably too little I think for me it'll probably be here I think in number five is good for me so I'm just gonna hit OK and you can see it's given us that effect so now we're gonna head up to object go expand appearance now we need to turn this into a vector item oh now it's looking good let's uh, gather in here I'm gonna zoom, do the zoom effect just wait wait uh no yes no okay uh, uh, maybe that was just a, a bad idea sorry sorry now let's start vectorizing our graphics so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna just select it again so I'm just gonna drag the marquee over it again go on up to object drop down to expand appearance so let's head on up to window and then drop down to image trace which is over here I'm gonna click that up now you can see it's not nothing selected there so all I'm gonna do is just click over here in this area deselect and reselect and then it pops up so make sure your preview is selected over here I'm gonna tick that on and now I'm gonna start setting these advanced settings over here. So under this advanced tab, I'm going to push my paths all the way up to 100%. The corners I'm gonna put up to 100%. And the noise I'm gonna drop all the way down so that you can keep all those little detail that you did when we did the previous effect. Now I'm gonna select off this preview, kick that off and then click trace. Once that's done, we can go ahead and close this little window, go back up to object, click expand. You're gonna get that little pop-up window with object and fill selected, that's fine. You're gonna click OK. Then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get my direct select tool, which is this tool over here. And I'm just gonna click off and click on this outside border here. Then I'm gonna head on up to select and I'm gonna select same full color. And I'm just gonna hit backspace or delete. And then we can now have a one color stamp effect. So you can see if I zoom in here, that's just one simple color. So that is our stamp effect if I just rotate it like this get like that and go boom stamp effect so if you want to follow along in this tutorial you can download the link which I'll leave in the description below and remember you can pause it anytime if I talk too fast and make sure to head on over to our social channels as well as the new Facebook page keep on creating where you can show off your skills learn some new skills before you go remember to smash that like button subscribe stay safe keep on creating and I'll catch you on the next one I'm out of here